www.beginneducator.com and here we're going to do a little quick recap of the most dangerous game. So background on the author. First off we got Richard Connell. Well he lived from 1893 and 1949. Not quite as seller as Ray Bradbury but he is most famous for the short story you just read. Now he was, he was also a journalist and a screenwriter. Unfortunately he didn't get a star but you know, he was still pretty famous and pretty awesome back in his day. About the book. Well, it was the most dangerous game, originally, and I think better, published as The Hounds of Zaraf in 1924. Now, why is this year significant? Why is this time period significant? Well, it was just after the events of World War I. And I'm going to explain later how that's kind of important to this story because, well, some events in World War I really affected the country of Russia. During this time period, the richest people in the world still went safari hunting. Now, if Bill Gates or Warren Buffett went safari hunting and they bagged themselves a Bengal tiger, PETA and everybody else would be screaming at them and calling them terrible, terrible people. But in 1924, there was no PETA, and people still just hunted really, really important animals that are now endangered, just for fun. This conflict of the story, which you've just read, has inspired a lot of movies and several television episodes. I can't even count them, but if you Wikipedia them, you're going to find them all. And you know what? I looked at Wikipedia, and I could still think of more. There are just so many TV series and so many movies that have the same theme of humans being hunted. So, let's go ahead and go straight into the story and let's start with this opening prelude. This is going to be very, very important for the next couple lessons when we start discussing setting and theme. So, we got one hunter named Whitney who is hanging out with his friend Rainsford. And Rainsford is talking about the best sport in the world. And for a hunter is the best sport in the world, amended Whitney, not for the Jaguar. Okay, and Ransford just says, Don't talk rot, Whitney. You're a big game hunter, not a philosopher. That's a very, very important statement. Tells us a little bit about Ransford and kind of how he approaches things and what he thinks is most important. I'll tell you what he doesn't think is, is important, philosophy. Well, maybe the Jaguar does. Say. And he says, bah, animals have no understanding. Even so, jaguars do fear one thing, the fear of death. So again, Rainsford continues, nonsense. This is hot weather is making you soft, Whitney. Be a realist. Be realistic. Be normal. Get your head out of the clouds. The world is made of two classes, the hunters and the hunties. Luckily, you and I are the hunters. What do you think hunties means? Well, they are whatever's being hunted. Do you think we've passed that island yet? Okay, stop right there. What's important about this conversation? What stands out to you? Well, what are they talking about? They're talking about hunting. But Whitney sounds like he's kind of going into, well, kind of abstractions. He's starting, starting to kind of think outside his own perspective, and he's starting to imagine the perspective of an animal. How does Rainsford react to this kind of conversation? How much does he care? What is his answer? Hey, Whitney, you're a hunter, not a philosopher. That's a question for people with skinny arms. Very, very important. Please note that. Now, the first doorway is actually, well, not really a first doorway. It's our protagonist getting thrown into the ocean. So, he is thrown into the ocean, and he is desperately struck with strong strokes after the receding lights of the yacht. Where is this yacht going? Is it coming closer or is it going away? He stopped before he had some swum 50 feet. A certain cool-headedness had come over him, and it was the first time he had been in a tight place, or not the first time he'd been in a tight place. So, a little bit more about Rainsford here. What kind of person is he? Is he somebody who panics when his life is about to be threatened? Apparently not. There's a chance that the cries could be heard by someone aboard on the yacht, but the chance was slender and grew more and more as the yacht raced on. He wrestled himself out of his clothes and shouted with all his power. The lights of the yacht became faint and ever-vanishing fireflies, and they were blotted out entirely by night. 
Now, I've said before that the first doorway in stories is usually when the protagonist makes some kind of decision to move the story forward. Now, you might be thinking here, hey, this guy has just been thrown into the ocean. He really doesn't have much choice. Well, actually, he does. He can keep screaming and trying to panic and trying to swim after the yacht, or he can do something else. 